well dear students uh, welcome to my next session of uh, class on youtube in the previous session we have discussed about uh, bio fortification in today's topic we will be discussing about we will be discussing about uh, single cell protein that is very important topic, very small topic single cell protein shortly referred as SCP now what is single cell protein first of all when you come to know single cell you can understand that it is from microorganisms right like bacteria fungi yeast these are the bacteria, these are the microorganisms that produce protein. We also produce protein. In our body also protein is synthesized. In all animal bodies, proteins are synthesized. Plant bodies, proteins are synthesized. So these microorganisms also produce large quantity of proteins. Now, this term single cell protein was coined by Carol Carol L. Wilson. Carol L. Wilson in the year 1966 at Massachusetts Institute of Technology where at Massachusetts Institute of Technology in USA in the year 1966 Carol L. Wilson coined the term single cell protein for the proteins that are produced by microorganisms single cell organisms Unicellular organisms like bacteria, fungi, yeast, right? These microorganisms produce so like cyanobacteria, bacteria, all these produce what? Proteins in large quantities. So he coined the term single cell protein and then he designed a technique. He, he given a methodology how to produce single cell protein. This idea of obtaining proteins from microorganisms and utilizing now question may arise as proteins are there in meat, fish, eggs, milk, pulses, grains, vegetables and fruits and if we human beings are getting all these proteins from, from those men, those different sources of food. Now what was the requirement? Why do we produce protein from microorganisms? Means to say that a classical example has been quoted in the textbook also in NCRT that is nothing but for example a cow weighing around 250 kgs 250 kgs of cow clear produces only about only about 25 grams or so protein per day per day whereas on the other hand 25 grams of microorganisms single cellular organisms like bacteria cyanobacteria yeast etc 25 grams of microorganisms produce 25 tons of proteins per day the duration is same whereas such a heavy cow such a heavy animal produces very small quantity of proteins in a day whereas here only around 25 grams of microorganisms able to produce protein in terms of tons per day this was the one reason, main reason why Carol L. Wilson thought of obtaining protein from microorganisms, producing, producing proteins from microorganisms and then producing proteins from microorganisms and then using it as a source of proteins whereas other proteins can be diverted to animals one is here, two, two terminal is here, already I have told you in the same chapter, food grade, that is, it means for human beings, any food source, any food, edible item, right, which is used for human being, for human beings, for consumption, is known as food grade, whereas if you call it as feed grade, feed grade, same edible item, it is used for other animals, cattle, livestock, birds, other animals, fishes, whatever you use these edible items that is what feed grade means it is for animals now what was his concept of Canadian Wilson is to divert the other proteins to animals as a feed grade as a feed grade 
Then, whereas uh, this the same protein can be used for human beings, and that's why this idea. And moreover, this is the main basic reason why we thought of producing single cell protein. Moreover, one more reason is these microorganisms can be grown, can be grown easily, easily on on very cheap, right? Cheap. I don't use this word much in fact. On a very economical, right? Waste or very economical raw materials like molasses, waste, straw, right? The waste of sugar cane, even on sewage water, the water that has been washed, you win the water that has been used in washing vegetables, fruits, and that water also, the waste water also, and the water that has been used to wash potatoes and other vegetables, that water also can be used to grow microorganisms, can be grown on very cheap, very economical waste material or which is thrown as waste vegetables fruits peels right straw and also on the sugar cane waste from sugar cane industry or sugar juice industry all those, those waste also you can grow these microorganisms moreover one more reason why right because these microorganisms are short lifespan they are very small lifespan short lifespan in a very small period of time the number of the microbes will double you, you might be knowing Around 18 to 20 minutes is the life cycle of bacteria. Even in molecular biology, you would have come across E. coli bacteria around 19 minutes. 19 minutes, one bacteria will become two, another 19 minutes, the two will become four. Another 19 minutes from four to eight, like this, they multiply. So here, in a very short span of time, the population of the number of these microorganisms also increases very rapidly. They can be grown on very easily available raw material, waste raw material. So these are the reasons why he thought of growing, he thought of obtaining this single, this single cell protein from microorganisms, right? Clear, then, the, um, some few bacteria, few examples of bacteria or organisms which produce single cell protein are, it can be asked now, I will tell you the definition, what is single cell protein, means, the process of production of proteins in large scale, by using microorganisms is called single cell protein. It can be asked for one, one mark for definition in your uh, final exam. Define single cell protein. Name two bacteria or two microorganisms that produce single cell protein. Now I am going to uh, the, give you the example of uh, the organism that produces single cell protein. The process of production of protein in large scale from microorganisms is called single cell protein. The organism that produces single cell protein are like Bacteria in bacteria methylotrophus methylotrophus methylophilus methylophilus methylotrophus it's like this methylophilus methylotrophus one more point about this bacteria this bacteria produces highest amount of maximum amount of single cell protein <coughs> then Cyanobacteria like anabina or like spirulina, you might have you might have heard this word spirulina tablets or spirulina capsules. Some of you might be using for the to overcome the deficiency of proteins. Right? These tablets are used by astronauts, by dietitians, right? by many uh, celebrities because they give very good rich, they are the rich source of proteins and in a small, small capsules they are available, spirulina, you also might be knowing, spirulina gold, spirulina different, different brands are there, spirulina maxima, spirulina maxima and spirulina fusiformis, this is a species, maxima fusiformis, these are the two cyanobacteria that produce what? Single cell protein, one is spirulina maxima, other is spirulina fusiformis. Then, yeast, yeast, in my other chapter also, in the next chapter, that is microbes in human welfare, in that chapter also you have studied about yeast because in fermentation technology also yeast is used. There are two types of yeast, one is known as Saccharomyces cerevisiae, commonly known as Baker's yeast. In the 10th chapter, microbes in human welfare, you might have studied these points, but how come? Saccharomyces cerevisiae is known as Baker's seeds, commonly known as Baker's seeds because it is largely used in bakery industry for the fermented products, right? In the, even in the uh, 
dairy spent there and one more reason is saccharomyces ellipsoidalis saccharomyces ellipsoidalis it is known as brewery yeast why because it is this yeast is largely used in brewery industry what do you mean by brewery industry alcohol industry beer wine alcohol you might have studied in the 10th chapter right clear so saccharomyces cerevisiae used in bakery dairy industry commonly known as baker's yeast saccharomyces saccharomyces cerevisiae cerevisiae it is commonly known as baker's yeast this was also used in the production of single cell protein very important point about this saccharomyces cerevisiae yeast is it is known as it is the food grade what grade food grade what do you mean by food grade the protein are there here as ready for it used as a food for human beings so the protein produced by yeast that is nothing but produced by saccharomyces cerevisiae only certified as fit for consumption of human beings so it is nothing but the food grade the protein that is produced by saccharomyces cerevisiae yeast is is tested and approved as food grade whereas the protein produced by vitro cholesterol this also can be asked you know in uh, nitrous it can be asked which is a bacteria identify the bacteria that produces the highest amount of single cell protein you can write as vitro filus vitrotrophus highest cyanobacteria give the example of cyanobacteria means cell in the maxima cell in the fusion virus then and uh, the question can be asked like this also in your final exam also or in neat exam also identify the organism which produces food grade single cell protein then nothing but saccharomyces cerevisiae many questions can be framed over here in your final exam board exam and as well as in your neat exam now the examples are like the examples of fungi are these are the examples of bacteria cyanobacteria is fight now fungi like as Aspergillus niger is also produced citric acid, also used. Then, Fusarium species, Fusarium species, right? Aspergillus species, clear. These are the different species of fungi that produces that produces single cell protein. Fungi also produces, bacteria also produces, cyanobacteria also produces, yeast also produces. That's why it is known as single cell protein. You know, all of us are concerned with microorganisms. Now, this is the only protein that is approved for the approved for the consumption of human beings. Right? These tablets are taken as a source of protein by astronauts because they can't afford to have, they can't afford to take food. Right? This this tablets are also taken by taken as a protein supplement by models, actors, bodybuilders, wrestlers, right? Boxers, right? Then other celebrities because they are comes in a very small capsule, spirulina. You also don't consume this without the prescription of doctor or physician, right? Spiral attachment, spiral goal, but they are of course beneficial. Now, why the production of single cell protein? Because I have told you the advantage of production of single cell protein is because the microbes are very, very easily available in the nature. They can be easily grown on raw material, cheap material, waste material. The lifespan of this microorganism is very short, right? So in a short period of time, the number will double. Or the number will increase. These are the few reasons, and the proteins produced in large quantities in a small amount of time. This much of proteins to be produced by animal or human beings or proteins in the body takes very long period of time. Whereas here, in case of these bacteria, microorganisms, they produce large quantity of proteins in a very short span of time. This is the main reason. And second reason is they can be grown easily on waste material. Fine. So this protein can be used as food. Now, spirulina is very. Popular brand throughout the world, spirulina tablets, protein sources, right? Cod liver oil tablets also comes. They are also source of protein. Don't get confused with those tablets. They comes in like yellow color, golden color cod liver oil tablets. They are also source of proteins obtained from liver of fishes, right? Shark and other thing, other fishes. Where these are the protein tablets obtained from microorganisms. Advantages I have told you. Advantages of single cell protein. Good source of protein. Easily available. Microorganisms can be easily can be easily can be easily grown on cheap material. Now here are here are few methodology how to grow. Take the microorganisms, right? You can grow in vessels, fermenters, or in petri dishes on simple media or by using a waste raw material. You can grow these microorganisms. Same microbes can be applied for the production of proteins. Now disadvantages of single protein, single cell protein. It is not there in our study material also. Most probably, I don't know whether it's there in the NCERT also, maybe not be there also. 
there are two three disadvantages are there one is all right in some people in some people drastic increase in body weight right they put on more weight in case of females in case of females it leads to the increasing in the weight right whereas in case of males it leads to it leads to renal renal calcify chances of if you consume more single single cell protein without prescription of the doctor without requirement without needed or necessary if you consume excess of single cell protein it leads to formation of kidney stones or what we call renal calcify in case of males right whereas in case of females it leads to it leads to increase the weight body weight right then in few people it is also observed that the people who have protein allergy some people will have protein allergy if they consume ground nuts right fried ground nuts they get some allergic reactions fine right? itching sensations i have discussed this in eighth chapter human health and diseases fine right? oil allergy protein allergy if some people consume seafood seafood is also very healthy very tasty very healthy also but if some people consume prawns because of the rich source of proteins right so so they also get allergies and here single cell protein also some people few people show allergic reactions proteins are body builders we have told you in the first year chapter also biomolecules they are very much required clear Pro the rich source of protein are fish meat right clear egg milk right the people who don't consume meat you go for milk consumption egg consumption even if you go if you don't eat egg to supplement the protein because proteins are very much required you know the deficiency disorder squash care and other this is occurs so if you don't consume milk or egg or meat if you don't consume if you are not eating this then soya soya beans are the richest source of protein as far as vegetarian food is concerned soya chunks can be used soya bean can be used and other pulses can be used as a source of protein and this is also one of the major source of proteins disadvantages are also have discussed advantages also have discussed the procedure methodology and few microorganisms right keep studying next topic what we have is uh, uh, plant tissue culture in about two classes we can uh, cover wait on that complete that so keep studying study the refer the study material repeatedly watch this class make your own notes make your make your own notes keep studying do take very good care of yourself god bless you good luck take care